Welcome, everybody. I think we can uh, start uh, tonight's uh, CBD uh, session. Uh, I'm Declan from uh, the UAE branch of the Institution of Structural Engineers. Uh, just a couple of uh, notes uh, before we start. Uh, the session is being recorded and it's also it's also gone live on YouTube. So tonight's talk is by Leviat. It's by Roman Cargill. And he's going to talk about uh, shear connectors in areas of uh, high seismic activity. So I'll hand you over now to uh, Roman. Thank you, Roman. Thanks, Declan, uh, for the uh, presentation, for the introduction. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks to the Institution of the Structural Engineers uh, that I have the uh, possibility to speak uh, a few words and uh, share some interesting uh, topics. Hopefully, I'm going to share my screen right now. So. Uh, yes, we can see that. Thanks, can Roman. You see screen. Perfect. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, basically the topic today is shear lead connectors in seismic areas. And uh, additionally, we have a part two, which uh, covers uh, post-tensioning structures and the uh, application for uh, shear lead connectors as, as well. First of all, I would like uh, to introduce briefly uh, what is Leviat. I think uh, most of you have heard about this, well, rather new brand. Uh, what is it? Was what is behind? Uh, that is the first point I want to uh, talk. Then I want to go over to uh, movement joints, not too much into detail. Then concentrating on uh, cred shaled connectors, uh, especially in seismic regions. Uh, then I have a case study to present, uh, which is um, uh, Corus Life in Bergamo, Italy, a nice project. We recently sold a lot of these uh, uh, connectors for seismic areas. Then it's coming to part two, which is uh, the PT structures, uh, which presents the lockable DAO, and then some uh, case studies for PT structures uh, uh, as well that we did with, with the lockable DAO. Um, as usually, there's a say in Austria that says uh, it is uh, much better to have some pictures than a, a lot of talking words. So that's and I think it's even better if we're talking about uh, uh, a video. And that's the reason why I we have a nice new video from Leviat, which gives you a, a brief introduction. So I'm going to run that now.
Yeah, quick uh, introduction by video. Uh, when we go back to the presentations, so basically you see uh, the, a lot of different brands which are basically merged together in in uh, Leviat. So the basic idea was uh, when you have big brands like Ancom, Halfen, Blacka, Metalburg, Advan, and and all the others uh, here listed on the on the screen. Um, it is it is always difficult to put them together in one company uh, as when when one of the companies is is more or less uh, swallowing the other ones. Uh, and that was the basic idea. That's like, hey, let's let's create a complete new brand, which is absolutely unknown, and uh, merge all these companies in this one uh, big group. And that has happened uh, two years ago. So in total, uh, we are three thousand people right now at sixty locations in twenty countries, and uh, we are running twenty three uh, production plans right now. Uh, in in global locations, as you can see, all of the blue dots here is is one of our uh, facilities. Yeah, that was a, a brief introduction about uh, the movement joints. I think some of these brands are pretty familiar to you guys. Um, now talking to movement joints, so that that's the main topic of of today. Um, the main application for uh, for uh, shale or connectors basically is movement joints. That's clear. We need them for large structures, especially when you have shopping malls, hospitals, offices, apartments, all these uh, larger structures. You are forced to do some movement joints in between to avoid cracks in uh, in the concrete structure. Um, and there are uh, a lot of different solutions available to handle movement joints. It is not necessarily a, a shale or connector. You have some traditional opportunities as well, like uh, a two column support. You separate the building into two and then it can it can move. Uh, every building can move on its own, but it costs space. You can use down stands uh, to produce a corbel, but it's, it's intrusive in the in the habitats as well. You can use slab corbels, but that is requires a, a certain slab thickness uh, that uh, that is possible. Um, and that is not always given as today people tend to uh, uh, build as slim as possible with uh, the, the minimum of, of the of the load that we have. So the solution basically from Leviat uh, is the shale load connector, which is a compact and simple unit, always consists of a sleeve and a dowel part. Uh, and with that, we are able to control the movement and limit the cracks. So, as mentioned, larger uh, it, it is it is is one of the main applications. But what is the benefit of those share load connectors? Uh, we definitely we just learned it is a simple to install. Uh, we increase the space and uh, uh, within the, habit, the 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 rooms, and uh, sorry, um, and uh, yeah, it is it is quite easy. To in, in terms of uh, reinforcing uh, installation and so whether you just nail it to the to the formwork and you are done with the first part then you put as you can see on the picture right here uh the worker is is in in uh, inserting the dowel part into the already cast first part of the uh of the building and then they come with the reinforcement cast the slab and we're done so basically uh as Leviat is a, a merge of different uh uh, as as, as, as Levia, this is a, a, a merge of different um, brands uh, producing even shale connectors. You see, there's a wide range of uh, of different connectors available, starting with uh, a DAO from Paca, which will not be uh, known in the Middle East. I would suppose it is more or less in in France and Belgium. Uh, they they know these products very well. I think Middle East, you know, definitely the DSD. You know uh, the the single dowels, of course. You know might know the lockable uh, dowel, and and I'm pretty sure you know the cred uh, from Ashwanden as well. That is the star today, because I'm want to focus on on this uh, uh, type of dowel, because that is the one we use for for seismic uh, regions. So if we look into uh, the cred. Dowel systems. Uh, we have basically the possibility uh, to for lower loads to use a single dowel, uh, which is on the left side uh, visible. 
Um, and we have the heavy duty uh, um, share load connector on the right side, which is the CRED 100 series. And that's that's the one we're looking into it. Uh, if uh, we want to have a, a, a movement joint uh, installed with uh, share load connectors in seismic areas, because I think all of you wouldn't really want to rely on a single DAO uh, for, uh, for a, a building which is located in a seismic area. So what does the DAO looks like? Uh, basically, if we uh, focus in uh, to the CRED 100 series, we have basically a DAO, of course. Um, but this DAO is, and that is the, the big difference between other systems, is, uh, is uh, hosted or built in a, in a supporting case, what we call the body. Uh, as you can see, uh, concrete pressure is not a topic because we leave the forces uh, of the, uh, coming from the DAO into uh, these supporting cases. And it is clear that, that you have a proper embedment of DAO in both sides of, uh, of, the, of the concrete parts. It looks the same on the sleeve side as well as on the DAO side. And additionally, we have these vertical studs. It's basically a, a threaded uh, stud with nuts uh, and bolts on, on top and bottom. Um, and the nuts, basically, if you, if you look at it, it, it will remind you to a punching shear stud rail. And that is not a coincidence. Um, it is exactly the same uh, purpose. So these studs uh, should uh, increase the punching shear resistance of, of the system at the, at the uh, edge of the slab. And it does it really well. So basically, uh, mentioned we have the standard version uh, is always sleeve and dowel. So we have the dowel uh, with a standard sleeve, which has a, a circular shape. So um, it provides an axial movement only, as you can see on the screen. But in some cases, and especially if we're looking into seismic uh, uh, applications, you may have the, the situation that you need additional lateral movement. And uh, that is basically the same DAO from before, uh, but you have a suitable sleeve for lateral movement, which is the CRED V type sleeve. Um, and in this case, you see you have a, a rectangular section where the, where the DAO fits in and is centered uh, within the rectangular section with foams on both sides or a kind of spring uh, nowadays. Um, and that gives us the possibility of the axial movement of the standard version. Uh, but additionally, we have uh, a lateral movement possibility, which looks like this. So that's exactly the situation where I say, okay, we, we are properly set up with, with the DAOs. We have that in eight different sizes up to loads of, of 700 uh, kilonewton per DAO. Um, and uh, that's the base. So basically uh, looking into share load connectors uh, of, the, of the correct range, we have a simple and easy uh, installation. Uh, we can remove this column, for example, and build it like this. So we uh, increase the space in, the, in, in habitat offices or whatever. Uh, we reduce construction time because using a, a sleeve with some uh, nail plate and uh, install it on a, on a, on a shuttering is, is quite an easy task. Yes, and we can uh, transfer really high loads and we have a higher corrosion resistance. So basically the towel uh, has a, a, a corrosion resistance in class four, so it's a prem uh, value of 30, and the housing is, uh, is, is, is usually uh, a 23, and we are currently improving that to 25 prem index. So the corrosion resistance is pretty good. Yes, and what we additionally can offer is the design software uh, and, and BIM models uh, are available for this system as well. Looking a bit more into the design concept of the CRED DAO, in this uh, picture you can see the black lines is, is uh, more or less the, the body of the system. You have the red arrows, the horizontal red arrows, they show in the longitudinal reinforcement uh, within the slabs, and the vertical arrows, they, they are standing for the U-bars, which take in the shear loads, basically. 
you see that the load is pretty uh, more uh, pretty good distributed within the slab, um, and and that's that's the reason why this uh, system works pretty well even for seismic uh, applications. So it's always when we're talking about shear load connectors, yeah, you, you need to bear in mind uh, we we bear the, the full uh, uh, building uh, on on these movement joints on the shear load connectors. So it's always a question: hey, Do we have an approval for that? Uh, of course, we have. So basically, currently there is a, a German approval existing. There is one in Poland existing. We had one in France that um, has been expired in 2021. The reason why we did not renew this one was that we applied for an ETA for a, a European technical approval. Um, and that is currently under development. So we expect by hopefully next year uh, to have that paper ready. Um, additionally, that is already uh, agreed with the ICC in the US. Uh, we will have the ETA once it is uh, issued uh, as a base for uh, an ICC evaluation. And that will need some additional tests for seismic uh, activities as well. But what we, what we do uh, now is basically uh, we did, uh, based on a product, of course, uh, we have been asked uh, or we did a test in, in Chile at uh, um, university in in chile with a with a very uh, well known uh, uh professor who did these tests and looked into it uh with the cret 122 v so that the v is for the lateral movement as i mentioned and um i think that is the base uh of some of the projects we could uh, uh supply within the last uh, couple of years and uh, i think it will be uh, the the base for some other projects as well, and uh, I would dive. I would like to dive uh, with you into that test scenario that we did. So basically, as you can see, we have share connectors on both sides of uh, uh, on, on on top and bottom here, and uh, we have a, a hydraulic uh, operator that pushes these uh, um, these axes forwards and backwards. That was the test setup. Um, and then we looked into, uh, so basically the, the test follows a, a sine curve. Um, and we took uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, um, uh, as a as a base, we took one of the biggest earthquake that happened in, in Chile in, in 1958. Uh, so the, the maximum load on uh, positive and negative has been taken from here. And that was that was basically the the, the 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 starting point. And when you look into the tests, we did uh, batches of fifteen cycles. And you see at the very beginning, uh, you have small deformations of the dial, but as long as it goes, um, the more the the, the deformation uh, happens to take place. Of course. But if you look a bit closer to this starting point and uh, have a look at the histories is at the beginning of the tests, it looks like this. So it is it is clear you have the deformation. It is it is visible here, um, and it is uh, um, this deformation is, is is kept in the system, of course. And if you go longer uh, and increase the number of uh, of cycles, what we did. You clear, clear, you clearly see, sorry, um, that there is a kind of a plateau established, and that is an interesting point. So we see that eventually uh, we found that a, a, a load plateau with a load of uh, per connector of sixty one point five kilonewton has been established. That will not go forever, of course, but it seems that even if the uh, deformation of the dowel increases, the top load or the maximum load stays more or less the same. So um, putting that all together with the tests we did in Chile, uh, it it clearly says uh, for small deformations the the gap is at uh, 1.5 uh, one one to 1.5 millimeter. The plateau that we uh, uh, that has been established was reached at uh, a value of 123 uh, kilonewton, 
for two connectors. So, um, and uh, the, the result uh, that that results in a maximum shear resistance of 60.1, uh, 65, 61.5 kilonewton per connector. And that is slightly higher what we currently show in the standard brochure of uh, for for predominantly static loads. So that is a, that is a quite good base where you can, uh, based on the location where you are, add a, a safety factor and uh, use that in in that way. So it it's, it, it seems that uh, it can resist even stronger earthquakes. So um, what what's what's about uh, the way we build a movement joint uh, for uh, uh, for uh, a seismic, you have basically two options. So uh, it is clear that a seismic uh, excitation forces the building to move. That is clear. Uh, it is always the question: How much is it? Is it a single bump, or is it is it a, a stronger, um, uh, a longer shaking of of the earth? Because that is. From my point of view, even if it's the same magnitude, uh, it uh, it makes a huge difference. I, I personally experienced uh, in it, at my location where I live an earthquake which was I think four point three uh, earlier this year, and but it was a single bump. It was not these these endless shaking which uh, you sometimes see on videos on YouTube. That is something that we definitely need to consider when we design a movement joint uh, with shear load connectors. Um, because if it's a single bump or we, we don't expect a, a longer shaking of the earth, we have the possibility to cover the horizontal loads that uh, that getting a, a introduced into the, the structure. That is only for a, a lower magnitudes for sure. But as you can see, if you use a cred DAO in blue, shown in blue for the vertical loads as usual, but additionally, some uh, in red uh, turned by 90 degrees to cover the horizontal loads. Both of them has a V-type sleeve to offer lateral freedom in this case. So in this case, we don't want to introduce a, a, a horizontal load into the blue ones, and we don't want to introduce a vertical load into the red dowels. So that is one option, but it is clearly the structural engineer is the one who needs to judge uh, is that something that we, uh, is the loads that, that can occur? Is, uh, are they coverable uh, by shale load connectors or not? And if that doesn't work, uh, there is a special edition of the CRED DAO, which is called the CRED Seismic. Uh, and the CRED Seismic basically is the, stand, uh, the, the same DAO, um, but, ah, sorry, um, yeah, that, that brings us to option two, sorry. Uh, the option two is uh, we don't want to take the horizontal load. We, we leave the building and let it swing. So in this case, we don't need the red ones uh, anymore. So we're just taking care about the, the vertical shear loads. Um, and the special edition, basically, we have for the crate range has an additional plate on the dial on the back side of the case, which is shown here. Uh, and this additional plate um, takes care that the dowel is not uh, even on the on the on the heavy uh, um, shaking of the of, of the building uh, is not pulled out of the of the of the casing. And on the other side, we have a longer dowel, which uh, makes sure that the dowel itself doesn't <clears throat> so it doesn't uh, slip out uh, of the sleeve. So the longer dowel basically uh, has a maximum joint up to 120 millimeters. So we need to uh, be clear what is the, the maximum joint uh, in case of an earthquake that could happen and, uh, and the maximum loads, of course, as well. So yeah, as mentioned, you, you need for this approach, for the option two approach, we definitely need to have uh, the horizontal, uh, the lateral movement possibility because we don't want to introduce horizontal loads into the DAO. They have lots uh, to do with the vertical loads only. And uh, yeah, that comes to Coros Life, which is a, a nice project uh, that we supplied in Bergamo last, uh, the last two years, basically, uh, which in, in total around 7,000 numbers of, of connectors of the CRED 134 seismic 
which is a bigger one. Uh, the 134 means that we have a 34 millimeter dowel in the system. Looking into Coro's life, that is a, um, well, a remarkable project from, from my point of view. Um, it, is, it is basically a kind of a smart district uh, that uh, they built into an area uh, in, a, in, in Bergamo, um, which hasn't been used for ages. So that uh, has been, all the old houses has been removed and they, they built up the, the, that new district. So basically, uh, for, for those who don't know Bergamo, Bergamo is in the north of Italy. Um, really beautiful city with an, an ancient uh, old city center. Um, and the, 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 new, uh, the new city center in, 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 in uh, Coro's life will uh, provide four different squares with lots of uh, restaurants, uh, cafes, uh, a city arena with 6,500 seats, a wellness complex, uh, a large car park, um, 74 uh, apartments for residentials, and uh, a hotel with 107 rooms availability. As you can see, the, the, the old ancient city center is to the left on, on, the, on that image, on the outside, unfortunately. Um, the project uh, has been the, the 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 entrepreneur of that project was a, a guy um, which with uh, his name is Domenico Bosatelli who had this vision and when he were get in touch with a, an architect a local architect which is uh, Joseph Pasquale um, they brought it to reality in in that way uh, the project should uh, be uh, able to replicate it and on several locations uh, in uh, during Italy if that is a success and I, I'm pretty sure it will be and, and it is it is a, a smart city concept in total so in total uh, what, what does it mean the smart city so um, course life has a, a unique power concept it has photovoltaic panels it has a battery for storage of the of the energy it has a combined heat and power generation. And additionally, uh, it is connected to the Bergamo district heating plant. So uh, the carbon footprint uh, of, this, uh, of this smart city should be pretty low, um, which brings us to the sustainability, the smart district. Uh, so they, they are about to uh, getting certified uh, under the lead certification for neighborhood development at gold level which is pretty a challenge. Um, even for, for getting rid of uh, some contaminant uh, soil that has been, because there are, I think in one location, there was a kind of a, a production a, a, a production plant. So they really uh, removed a lot of soil uh, to have a really good base for a, a vibrant and healthy neighborhood. And on top of that, there is a GSM system, which is a, a revolutionary system platform, uh, which gives you the possibility to more or less uh, uh, take control for well shuttering in your in, in your in your apartment uh, by by smartphone. But you can also get in touch with uh, the, the the dining area, with the shopping area, with the spa. Spa. You can you can uh, organize uh, appointments. Uh, you can buy arena tickets. That's that's all done by with the smartphones, and um, yeah, the the project is going to be ready in early uh, 2024. Unfortunately, uh, Domi, uh, Domenico Bosatelli, the 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 idea, uh, the 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 one who gave the idea for that uh, project, passed away in 2022. So he could uh, see uh, the start of the project, but uh, unfortunately, he will not see it. Uh, when it's when it's ready. Um, that is a nice view from from a drone to the current building site. Maybe maybe one month ago, just to give you an an impression. On the left side is the arena with a really fantastic 
uh, facade of uh, made out of uh, aluminium tiles. You see it, it comes again, these uh, sinus shaped facade. And uh, the idea behind that is that these uh, aluminium tiles are polished and they are firmly fixed to the building, but they can move. Every, every single tile is able to move and that makes this uh, special effect. Yes, inside of the arena. Still a building site, but um, I think quite impressive and a large area. Okay. Yeah, coming coming back to uh, earthquakes uh, and statistics. So, uh, well, basically, uh, one of the biggest points at the beginning when we uh, were talking about shale lot collectors, can we use them in, in in Bergamo? Was clearly what, what's what's the the current statistic? What what can we expect for the next uh, upcoming years in terms of earthquake? And uh, there's a quite uh, a good report which says that we expect uh, a yearly number of five uh, earthquakes with a magnitude four plus uh, that has been constantly to, throughout the last 10 years. The, the strongest one in the last 10 years was about 4.8 magnitude and uh, the strongest since 1900, so since, since they record the data, uh, has been 6.5, which is, which is quite strong. So that is definitely a, a topic we need to take care. And uh, if you guys remember back to the to the test report we did in Chile, you see the same uh, for Chile. You see that we have we don't know the actual number per year in this case, but you see that the the, the usual uh, earthquakes uh, by end of 2022 has been around uh, four four point three four point six something like that. So that means that uh, when we uh, came up with uh, the uh, the test report from Chile, uh, it it was it was quite comparable to Bergamo, and I think that was one of the big uh, biggest out of the base that that we could win that job eventually. Yeah, just an example uh, of the drawings, uh, as you as you remember from the drone video. I'm I'm pretty sure you you can remember that is the arena. And you see, there are some of the shale connectors all along here and here, and some intersections out of the of the drawings uh, shown on the right side. And additionally, some images uh, from site. You see that's the uh, the sleeve with the rectangular box. You see that it's pretty wide, so we uh, have a, a movement of in total 100 millimeter in lateral. Uh, uh, in the lateral direction. Um, as mentioned, nail it to the shuttering, then you can add the, the reinforcement and eventually pull the concrete. So the, the installation is pretty easy, even for the seismic dots, the same like the standard towel. Okay. That's basically uh, everything for uh, connectors in uh, seismic areas uh, with Bergamo Life. Um, I would like to come to part two now, uh, which is share load connectors in post-tensioning structures. That is a difficult uh, um, topic as well, as we know uh, that once you uh, strengthen the tendons or you, 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 you tension the tendons, it is clear that we have some additional movement uh, in the PT slabs just because of, of these additional loads that uh, come in from, from internal, basically. So how can, we, how can we solve that or avoid that? So uh, we, I think we can't avoid it, but uh, what we can do is the standard, a standard approach to... Uh, 
to face these uh, additional uh, movement coming from the post tensioning uh, are pull strips. That's the traditional way to do it. But as you can see, um, pull strips is always um, a bit of a problem in terms of uh, we have a gap open. Well, let's say 14 to 90, I think in the most of the uh, most of the uh, situations, the building size, it's around 50, 60 days. Uh, but sometimes it's up to three uh, is open to three months uh, as, as a holding period. Um, we definitely need uh, slab propping all the time. Um, the open gap, which is usually around 800 to 1000 uh, millimeter wide, uh, is a trip asset. So you need to be careful to, uh, that your stuff doesn't trip in or get, getting getting hurt. Um, also, the propping uh, provides a, a restricted size as, uh, side access. Uh, so you're not able to uh, easily uh, go through the, because it's all full, full with props. Um, yeah, it delays uh, any any additional uh, works, and of course uh, the 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 the, comp the the construction company need, need to come back later on to fill the strip. So um, yeah, unslide sop it, it, that is that that could be a, a topic as well if if they uh, didn't uh, place the shuttering correctly on the way, but that happens in in some cases. Um, what can we do against that? So basically, there are some uh, traditional ways of uh, avoiding the open gap and avoiding the pool strip uh, is using uh, metal ducts uh, with where you slide in the rebar and uh, add a pipe to the end. So once uh, the holding period has been uh, finished, you uh, you are able to grout these these ducts. But that is uh, as it is mostly a, a kind of a self. Uh, a do-it-yourself solution for some of the PT companies. Uh, it's not very reliable, unfortunately. So, so basically, uh, the, uh, the the solution for that uh, is if coming from Ancon is the lockable dowel. So, the lockable dowel basically uh, is is a, a share connector, as we uh, already saw before. But the difference is uh, the difference is that we have the possibility to keep the gap open. We we can leave the the, the slab moving for um, the agreed point of the uh, agreed uh, time. So it could be sixty days, could be ninety days, whatever. Um, and once the main movement coming from the post tensioning has been uh, completed. Uh, we are able to lock the system. So that is what we call a temporary movement joint because it, it is a movement joint at the beginning, but once the system is locked, it, it will not be able to move anymore. That is available for slab to slab uh, and slab to wall, of course, which is the, 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 the usual situation where we have these, these kind of uh, post-tensioning connections. So that's the lockable dowel, how it looks like. Uh, we have two sizes available. There is uh, the one which based on a single dowel and there's one based on a, a high load dowel. So basically you have a, a void former, uh, which is connected to the sleeve. You have a, a dowel with uh, uh, some grooves at the, at the end where the locking plate uh, eventually will fit in. And then we can uh, lock the system uh, with a two-component epoxy resin. Yeah, as mentioned, it allows the shrinkage of the concrete to take place. It is already supported, so you can, once the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the concrete has been cured, you can remove the props on one side. Uh, that's, that's why it increases uh, the, the um, site access. It, it reduces construction time. And it increases safety because there's no open cup anymore available. Um, so I have another short video. I hope it works. Um, that shows uh, the Ancon lockable dial. I'm going to make that bigger. So you have the sleeve here which uh, is installed on the shuttering. Then the reinforcement is getting installed and we put the concrete on the first side. The box lid from the void former is, is, is visible on top. 
So after removing uh, the formwork, you can install the DAO. Just push it in. Then same stuff again. So we bring the reinforcement into the, uh, the formwork and cast the second side. So now you see uh, the joint is pretty close because it uh, has been casted with a joint of zero. So depending on the agreed holding time, uh, the gap moves up. So then and in uh, later on, we can fill the gap, usually on a cementia space, uh, remove the, the, the lid from the weight former. And now we've, we have this locking plate, which fits in the groove. You can take any of these. Um, then the epoxy resin is getting mixed up. There's always one, as two, these two tins for one shale connector, which is exactly the, the amount of resin that we need. And once the resin is cured, uh, our temporary movement joint has been locked. And you can close the, the weight former with some uh, uh, mortar and you're done. As you can see, no pool strip available, no, no hazards. And of course, it gives us the possibility to uh, remove the, uh, the, the, for, the, the formwork and the, and the props on one side earlier, because once the, uh, once the, sorry, uh, once the, um, the, the, the resin is cured, Um, uh, once the concrete is cured, you can remove the props. So you're, you're taking usual, the usual 28 days of, of, of curing time for the concrete. So in time of product uh, and uh, range and dimensions, we have uh, two sizes of, uh, of the lockable dowel, which is the standard one that we saw in the video. It's a single dowel uh, with a appropriate sleeve. Uh, we have a, a high load version, which can take higher shear loads, but it's still a 30 millimeter dowel as the single dowel is. So in this case, the advantage is, uh, base is, is only the, the, the lower the higher shear load. Uh, if you need it, uh, we have um, uh, some anchors that we can place within the wall for a wall to slab connection. Um, yeah, in this case, the, the dowel is a bit shorter. In terms of loads, so the standard version, basically, it always depends on the slab thickness, as you can as you can look uh, uh, on, on in this table. So the maximum tension uh, load along dowel axis uh, is up to 100 uh, kilonewton. That's the same for the for the HLB version as well, because it's a 30 millimeter dowel uh, as well. And uh, the shear uh, resistance is usually around 45 50 depending on slab thickness you see especially if you uh, face with very slim slabs uh, it lowers the the possible shear load uh, for the system tremendously basically the same for uh, slab to wall connections but in this case depending on the on the stud uh, anchor in the wall uh, the maximum uh, um, tension load is, is lower. So in, in total, what, what, what's the benefit of the, of the lockable dowel? It, it saves some time and, and therefore money on the construction side. Uh, we do not need to drill any formwork. Uh, we... Um, have the formwork earlier available because, as I mentioned, once the concrete has cured, uh, even if the if the the lockable dowel system is open, so it's 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 not locked, it can already take the shear load. So you can remove uh, the props underneath and and the formwork underneath. Um, yeah, we we do not have uh, additional pouring of the strips. We just need to fill the the gap that opens up uh, after the the holding period. Um, and that brings some time saving and health and safety uh, issues are not given in the same way. The easy installation, you've seen it. Uh, I think that that's that's really an easy task. And in terms of uh, safety on site, uh, we do not have the trip hazard and we have a better, a much better sized access 
especially once uh, the, the concrete is cured and we can remove the props. Um, yeah, some additional nice projects uh, that we uh, have uh, have been equipped with a lockable DAO. There is a, a, a pretty a pretty recent one is the Field Scary Hospital in Melbourne that has been supplied uh, last year. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, lockable DAOs, lockable pins, which is uh, if you have additional uh, tension loads uh, or higher tension loads that you can cover with the lockable DAO. You can uh, add some some uh, some pins which only takes uh, the the tension loads uh, in 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 a horizontal direction, and some DSD in that in that project. You can see here we have the the void formers uh, of the lockable DAO, and the DAOs are already in, uh, in installed on the on the second side. Yeah, again, void form in this in this uh, situation, the void form is a bit higher than the slab thickness, but that's not a problem. It's it's made out of plastic, so can you can easily cut it with a knife. Um, next one is a um, project from Melbourne as well. So it's the the Royal Children Hospital. We supplied five thousand numbers of lockable dials there. Big one, really big one. Um, one project in Brisbane with uh, 2,500 numbers of, of lockable DAO installed. In this case, we have a, a wall to slab connection, as you can see, with pretty big slabs, considering the height of, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the sleeve. Um, a nice project, a really nice project from Oman, out of your region. We supplied 500 lockable DAOs, but uh, you, you see, there's a red line. Uh, it's, it's an Australian engineer, Australian engineer in this case, uh, who specified the lockable DAO. But that's, that that is already done, uh, and and uh, uh, I think the, the the museum is open. Yes, we uh, for a project in uh, in the UK, we installed uh, not not a big number, but two hundred lockable dials for uh, the university in Ipswich. Then there is a nice one from the US. The US is a strong market for post tensioning slabs as well. So we have a, a five story building with ninety nine apartments. So the East Library. Um, uh, with a with a gap which is uh, 320 feet long, and poor strips uh, strips has been specified, but we were able to uh, change to lockable dials because a, a, a holding period of 90 days is really long time where you have these open poor strips uh, on on the on site. And the last one from the US as well. The US colleagues are really proud of that one because it's the headquarter of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, where we uh, won that project, uh, yeah, because uh, the the poor strip has uh, significant would have significantly delayed the complete uh, the, the the project completion. Yeah, that was it basically from my presentation. I want to mention uh, we have uh, Leviat has a. Uh, a proper support in the Middle East, uh, the office uh, uh, in in uh, in in Dubai. Uh, Brashida, who is a part of the call here as well, is a specification engineer. She would be able to support you if you have any any questions in terms of technical details or or, or anything else. And uh, Jubiland is the managing director of of our Middle East uh, 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 Legacy Opco, and uh, yeah, he will be available as well if you have any uh, questions and both of them can of course reach out to me and I will support as much as I can. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Roman. That was a excellent and detailed presentation. The, um, the video description of the lockable dowel was uh, very, very detailed and easy to understand. So uh, thank you.
Um, one question that came to my mind, uh, Roman, was the the drone video through Chorus Live. I thought I thought it was flying fairly close to some of the columns at some stage. Yeah. I thought it was going to crash. I was wondering, did any did you lose any drones? Uh, I think uh, what, 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 I don't know. I'm not aware about any crashes, but it it looks really impressive. That uh, that was the reason why. To, to be honest, I, I found it in the web, so we didn't yes. do it on our own. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was really impressive flight, and that's that's why I said I need to, yes. need to include that. Very, it was it was very very good. Thank you. Um, yeah, we've got a we've got a few a few questions uh, yeah. come in. Um, so the first question. Uh, from Semi, he said, in the in the case of uh, CRET, C R E T, uh, the vertical studs uh, do they have to be torqued, or are they only for positioning purpose at the time of installation? No, basically they they uh, they are fixed installed to the sleeve and 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 dowel parts. You just need to uh, install the the sleeve, then then the studs are already in the in the correct position and. Um, the even the, the the knots they are glued they are fixed on on the threaded start so the, the the purpose for those is really to increase the punching shear resistance because a a, a shear load connector always has steel failure uh, concrete edge failure or punching shear failure that's the three failure modes you can you can uh, have if you test until the uh, anything breaks so these yes. these are the three failure modes and. Uh, we we really uh, realize that these vertical studs increase the punching shear uh, resistance of the system. Okay, thank yeah. you. Um, another question from uh, uh, Gopinath, but uh, possibly the question was a, a bit earlier in the presentation. Um, he's just asking, do you have any on-site photos uh, of the shear load connector installation uh, sequence? Yeah, it's... Um, it's um, not particular for the cred. Uh, we have we have some videos. Uh, if you look at YouTube for Encon, you will find some some videos. It is basically all the same. Uh, it, it, it's it's following the the way of of the video from the lockable dial, where you have the shuttering and you you place the the sleeve and and uh, put some nails in and fix it, and then you're done. Uh, after the reinforcement, uh, you can put the the slab. So it's okay. it's always the same the same uh, procedure. Okay. Um, uh, another question here. Uh, first of all, thanking you for the interesting presentation. Uh, the question, uh, considering the disproportionate collapse, if needed, uh, on a building, do the shear connectors regularly become as one uh, of the weakest points? Um, did you ever come across on any seismic area case study when the reason for the structural failure could have been caused due to shear load connectors at, at movement joint locations not not so far luckily well especially in seismic years you need to be aware if there is a huge earthquake uh, neither the shale connectors nor the building can stand that in in, in some cases if you look at, the, at one of the biggest earthquakes which has been documented during the last let's say 30 years uh, that there is there is no option you need to uh, rebuild or, or, or refurbish anyway if you have a if you are struck by a bigger earthquake yes okay luckily so uh, far we don't have any issues with our, with our uh, connectors yeah okay that's good um yeah because we're uh, we're on the cutting edge of technology we also have a couple of questions come in from uh, from people watching uh, on youtube um so uh, how about the behavior of the cret shear connector in for vertical seismic effects well if you have vertical seismic effects the, the 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 standard load direction is vertical so if that has been considered by a structural engineer uh, or is covered by the codes this is always a, a question of the code so if you have an, a, a a seismic or an earthquake code available in the country uh, then it needs to be respected anyway. So, uh, and once that is done, uh, we clearly know that's the maximum load the uh, shear load connectors need to take, and and they are designed based on that load. Yeah, designed for the load given by the by the engineer, basically. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And there's one more question. Uh, the university tests were performed uh, for the axial direction. Um, what about the vertical direction? 
perpendicular to, to axial movement? Um, um, basically, it has been done with a lateral, uh, so with a lateral with a V-type sleeve. So it is it is clear that uh, when you when you push and pull in these in this in this ways, can you see that? Yeah. Um, yep. it, it is it is it, in this in this direction. It was free. It was free to move. So we have we have we have tested only in in the in the direct direction uh, load direction of the, the load of the dial itself. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I think there's uh, one more question. What's the cost uh, of shear connectors? <laughs> that, that is something I, I really want to uh, to forward to to the team in the Middle East. To the team, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is that is uh, that is. Uh, I'm as since I worked or uh, started working as a product manager, I, I don't care about the prices anymore that much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it'll be a case by case basis. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, uh, I think, uh, hold on, I think there's another one come in. Yes, yeah, another question from Ajiz. Um, can it be used for movement of 250 to 100, to 250 to 500 millimeters lateral movements between buildings in both horizontal mm -hmm. in-plane directions? That, that's huge. So uh, that's the maximum we produced so far is 120 mil in total. So basically, we can produce something that uh, suits that requirements. The question is, if you really consider so uh, that that high horizontal movements, uh, I, I would question if if the share connector is the best way to go. Mm. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just check. Uh... One more time on YouTube. Okay, I think uh, that's it uh, for the for the questions. Um, again, uh, thank you very much, uh, Prasada, for for organizing uh, this this event. And uh, again, Roman, thank you very much for an excellent uh, technical talk. My pleasure. Um, yeah, the the talk will be available on the UAE Regional Groups. Um, YouTube uh, page in uh, uh, probably by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to mention as well uh, from from my side, uh, we also have a sponsor who are Hempel. You might see the logo in the background. So they produce uh, intumescent uh, coatings for for steel work. So you can visit their website uh, if you get a chance. Um, our next CPD talk will be in September. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, advertise for that on LinkedIn in in due course. So at the time is uh, eight o'clock and one minute. So I think we're 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 more or less done for today. So again, thank you very much, everyone, for for attending, and uh, have a good uh, evening. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank bye. you. Enjoy the evening. Cheers.